Good morning, brothers and sisters. In Luke chapter 21, verses 34 through 36, it reads, But take heed to yourselves, lest your hearts be weighed down with carousing, drunkenness, and cares of this life, and that day come on you unexpectedly. For it will come as a snare on all those who dwell on the face of the whole earth. Watch, therefore, and pray always that you may be counted worthy to escape all these things that will come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. In light of the truth that all that Jesus has predicted will come to pass perfectly, he gives a warning to his disciples. But it is also a warning which applies not just to the disciples in the first century, but disciples throughout the interval of time as we anticipate his return. Note that the command to be on guard does not mean to be on the lookout for signs, but with the command in Luke 21 verse 36 to keep alert. Jesus' point is that we are to continually be alert, and he explains why this is imperative. Otherwise, we will begin to be weighed down with the things that affect those in this world, who are living for this world. Jesus is calling for a heavenly mindset. In contrast to those who are sleeping until the time of Christ's return, listen to Titus 2, 11 through 14, quote, For the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men, teaching us that, denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present age, looking for the blessed hope and glorious appearing of our great God and Savior Jesus Christ who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from every lawless deed and purify for himself his own special people, zealous for good works. Christians are to live in direct opposition to the world. Instead of carousing, we are to live godly. Instead of drunkenness, we are to live soberly. Instead of being weighed down with the cares of this life, we are to live righteously. Indeed, we are counted worthy because Jesus has purified for himself his own special people, zealous for good works. Consider Romans 13 verses 11 through 14, quote, and do this, knowing the time, that now it is high time to awake out of sleep, for now our salvation is nearer than when we first believed. The night is far spent, the day is at hand. Therefore, let us cast off the works of darkness, and let us put on the armor of light. Let us walk properly as in the day, not in revelry and drunkenness, not in lewdness and lust, not in strife and envy, but put on the Lord Jesus Christ, and make no provision for the flesh to fulfill its lusts. Making provision for the flesh goes back to what was discussed in Luke chapter 21, being weighed down with the things of this world, weighed down with sin, weighted down, overpowered, burdened, and pressed. It is used, this verb, bereo, translated weighed down, it's used of heavy, sleepy eyes overcome with sleep. Paul says the day is at hand. And every day that passes, we are one day closer to his return. Now, given the danger of a slow leakage of eternal vision from our hearts, which would cause us to become sleepy regarding the days of days, Paul, in a letter addressed to new believers, writes words of warning and encouragement. Quote, but you, brethren, are not in darkness, that the day would overtake you as a thief compare it with suddenly like a trap. For you are all sons of the light and sons of the day. We are not of night nor of darkness. So then, let us not sleep as others do, but let us be alert and sober. For those who sleep do their sleeping at night, and those who get drunk get drunk at night. But since we are of the day, let us be sober, having put on the breastplate of faith and love, and as a helmet the hope of salvation." For God has not destined us for wrath, but for obtaining salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, 
so that whether we are awake or asleep, we will live together with him. Therefore, encourage one another and build up one another, just as you are also doing. Now, 1 John 2, 18 and verse 28, quote, Little children, it is the last hour. And as you have heard that the Antichrist is coming, even now many Antichrists have come, by which we know that it is the last hour. And now, little children, abide in him, that when he appears, we may have confidence and not be ashamed before him at his coming. Now, these verses in 1 John sound an awfully a lot like what John talked about in Revelation 3.18, quote, I counsel you to buy from me gold refined in the fire, that you may be rich, and white garments, that you may be clothed, that the shame of your nakedness may not be revealed, and anoint your eyes with eye salve, that you may see. Jesus' big point here is that if disciples are not alert for his appearing, and instead become too absorbed in the cares of everyday life, their senses will be dulled to eternal things, especially the need to be looking frequently for him and living faithfully for him. In conclusion, listen to this quote by J.C. Ryle. Let us learn from these verses the spiritual danger to which even the holiest believers are exposed in this world. Our Lord says to his disciples, Watch out, or your hearts will be weighed down with carousing, drunkenness and the anxieties of life and that day will close on you unexpectedly like a trap these words are exceedingly startling they were not addressed to carnal-minded pharisees or skeptical sadducees or worldly herodians they were addressed to peter james and john and the whole company of the apostles they were addressed to men who had given up everything for christ's sake and had proved the reality of their faith by loving obedience and steady adhesion to their master. Yet even to them, our Lord holds out the peril of carousing and drunkenness and worldliness. Even to them, he says, watch out. The exhortation before us should teach us the immense importance of humility. There is no sin so great, but a great saint may fall into it. There is no saint so great that he may fall into a great sin. Noah escaped the pollutions of the world before the flood, and yet he was afterwards overtaken by drunkenness. Abraham was the father of the faithful, and yet, through unbelief, he said falsely that Sarah was his sister. Lot did not take part in the horrible wickedness of Sodom, and yet he afterwards fell into foul sin in the cave. Moses was the meekest man on earth, and yet he so lost his self-control that he spoke angrily and unadvisedly. David was a man after God's own heart, and yet he plunged into most heinous adultery. These examples are all deeply instructive. They all show the wisdom of our Lord's warning in the passage before us. They teach us to be clothed with humility. Let him who thinks he stand take heed lest he fall. The exhortation before us should teach us the great importance of an unworldly spirit. The cares of this life are placed side by side with carousing and drunkenness. Access in eating and drinking is not the only access which injures the soul. There is an excess of anxiety about the innocent things of this life which is just as ruinous to our spiritual prosperity and just as poisonous to the soul. Never, never let us forget that we may make spiritual shipwreck on lawful things, as really and truly as open vices. Happy is he who has learned to hold the things of this world with a loose hand and to believe that seeking first the kingdom of God, all other things shall be added to him. God bless.